said, how do you pipe that music into the helmet? I didn't understand that. I didn't see that. So I'm going to show you this one. Oh, and by the way, this is what it looks like when you're not skiing with the helmet on. Okay? Have what they call an ear bra. I think that's funny. I don't know what it's going to call something else, but that's what I call it. ski without a helmet on, a hat, okay, or you can just go with the open melon, you know, face into the wind, cowboy hat when I was a kid. I fixed a Mickey Mouse face from a watch that had broken that I had gotten in Disneyland. And I couldn't separate it from the watch so I had to make use of it. So I took the face off of the watch and put it on the front of my cowboy hat where you'd normally have a feather and a nice bloom on the front. Well, I couldn't have that skin because I just skied fast even when I was Fifth grade, Carrie Peterson and Brian Peterson and that whole crew. So I had a cowboy hat that I used to wear, but I would have an elastic band that I had my mom sew into the hat so that the hat didn't fly off. And the band was probably a one inch thick, wide rather band. So it fit across your neck, and then we put a chin strap on it <laughs> from a football helmet, and we strung it through there. Anyway, so I had this thing on. Uh, actually, it looked like I was challenged on the hill wearing it sometimes. But anyway, actually, I only think I wore it once, and then I had to retire it after I felt like I looked silly in it. But, hey, we got a great show coming up here. But I need you to help me. I need some help. Are you guys skiing yet? I'm gonna find me a trainer that's gonna come on and talk to you about what you need to do to ski because that's another prerequisite to the sport is you can't just roll out of bed, have some sort of training beforehand. Now, not everybody has to follow into that category because the sport is primarily 10 to 35 year olds that age group doesn't have the problem of having to stretch and go through the warm-up routines that most people do so if you're 30 or 35 plus you need to you need to take uh, some notes you need to start eating better you need to stay in shape you need to before you go skiing you need to prep get yourself ready for the hill because it could be uh, dangerous for you if you get up there and you're way out of shape and you can break bones you can pop knees out and all kinds of stuff so if you're not in shape stay off the hill just don't go up don't stay anyway so no helmet we're going to talk about some gloves and some mittens we're going to talk about the music list Oh, some upcoming shows to get excited about. We've got the Louis Vuitton Valentine's Day special. We have the Bowls of Veil and Boots. Ski Boots. Yeah, we're going to talk about boots. Got a pair right over here that I was leaving out. Okay, well. The... glove situation I actually had some notes here I was talking about some gloves and some prices there's a price range that goes everywhere from 
$68 to $359 here for some outdoor research lucent mittens and uh, the black diamond mercury mittens are 110 so the Hofstra heli gloves are 160 they have a polyester fill by the way I bet those things are nice now if you look at just gloves in general uh, I'm gonna share with you a couple things that you want to look for when you're buying gloves and here's the reason why if you want to get the expensive gloves go right ahead leather gloves in fact here's what it says about leather gloves it says are leather gloves better leather gloves can be waterproof break in nicely provide a good level of dexterity even a thick severe cold weather style glove and they last leather is tough and it's durable and if it's treated properly with weatherproofing wax it doesn't freeze and it doesn't stiffen up and it will last for several years and that leads into a glove that I've had that's not leather but this these gloves I've had now for probably 10 years and the reason I got new gloves is is that the tip of the thumb was wearing out and I could start feeling it get cold when I was on the lift going up and maybe it was just because I was skiing down and it would catch wind but anyway it just was wearing out a little bit and if you look at the glove itself you can see that they're in pretty good shape shape it's just that this tip see how it's just a little bit weathered right there that tip is all it was and that's the thing about skiing is it's just those little things can make the big things go wrong so you have to take care of the little things now what else is cool about these gloves did you notice how it has these straps and why those are important is, is that you can put your hands in here while you're putting on your gloves, right? And then it has a Velcro strap on here that you tighten up over so they're tighter on the wrist. But this little strap here, what it's for is when you take off your glove and you're on the lift, there, you can let your gloves dangle from your arm. It's fabulous. You don't lose your gloves. And I'm sure that if they had gloves like this one here with the strap on it. And maybe even the Titan thing. And it has another strap here you can tighten down. I mean, can you see this? This is so crazy. These gloves are so good. And what they are is they're Burton's. I highly recommend these things. They're not leather. They're not anything like that. They were like 80 bucks worth every penny I paid for them. Last me 10, 12 years maybe, I don't even know. Like it's nuts, they're so awesome. So I said, I have to get some new gloves. So I bought these heads and these heads are just as cool. They're just a little bit big, which means that I can wear some finger liner gloves inside of them or not. But you have to be careful because you want gloves to fit snug because that's how your fingers usually get cold is if your gloves don't fit right or if you get snow in them and or if you take them off and drop them. So, I mean, even when you're at the lodge and you have that safety strap and your gloves on, it's amazing how far they'll, they'll go. But anyway, these gloves don't have the little toggle straps on them like I was looking at on those Burton's. I called these the spring gloves because in the springtime here in Arizona we have weather that allows you to just totally enjoy some awesome weather and some great some great spring skiing like you can't even imagine in fact if you go onto Snowball's website you can buy $29 lift tickets right now uh, 
in February and March. I mean, even in April, I believe. Or maybe it's March and April. But $29 for lift tickets. Even on weekends, it's nuts. But these gloves aren't rated for the same cold weather those are. These are 32 degrees to, I think, the zero or three degrees. I think it's zero, actually. I don't know why they'd stop at three. But anyway, it's a 3M product. They do real well. In the real, real, real cold, start getting below zero. These things aren't going to perform as well as the other ones. They're going to do okay, but you're going to you're going to want something that's going to be a little more weather resistant. And this is going to be just perfect for spring skiing. And they're Ed Harding. <laughs> they're cool as hell. They've got a nice little uh, rubber finish on the fingers. Set those over there. And we also have. The mittens. Now the thing about the mittens is, and we mentioned these ones before, is Olivia had got these for Christmas a couple years ago. And you can see they still look brand new and they're a good size. They fit her well. They have the toggles on them. They have the tighteners on them. They come with a snug little fit in the middle. They're just this cool little brand of, of gloves that have the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon logo on them. I don't know. Right in between those two gloves, the Burtons and the Heads. But more importantly is a glove like this doesn't have to be rated so low because the difference between having a mitten and a glove is that your hands can generate heat together. So when the question is, are gloves or mittens better? The answer that was given was both gloves and mittens are great for skiers and snowboarders. Gloves have individual pockets for the fingers and provide the most dexterity for doing zips, handling gear, holding ski poles, throwing a peace sign to Frank Diddy when you see him on the hill. Mittens, on the other hand, have one pocket for all fingers, which allow them to share internal heat. So you'd have to you'd have to say that you know if you're worried about your fingers getting too cold, you might want to buy mittens. If you want to have the dexterity of the glove, then stay away from the mittens and go for the glove. And then the last question that. Uh, was to be answered was should they be tight or loose and the answer to that question was properly sized gloves or mittens provide greater dexterity warmth and comfort for the best performance a proper fitted glove should be snugly and fitted and allow room at the end of an outstretched finger for you to pinch about a quarter of an inch of fabric so you don't want your fingers popping through the end like your uh, toes through holy socks you want that to uh, to fit right so there's a story on the gloves um, gloves can be fun they come in a lot of different like options like you, you know you saw with Olivia's set you have dark side of the moon these other ones these heads they just had the head logo stitched in which was a nice stitching for their logo and are embroidered same thing with the burtons they're embroidered but the burtons also had one more advantage they had a little pocket here that you could open up and put heaters actually in the gloves if you needed to and then but it has a roach clip built that. into the gloves I know if I had a record scratch, I'd put it on right now. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it has a roach clip built into the gloves. I did th these are the best. I don't know. I may have to just hook myself up with a brand new pair of these. Because I'm going to lose the other ones. We'll find out. I'll keep you posted on the other ones. And then if I don't lose it, all the better. 
Um, music, the music list. All right, we've got a couple of surprises because the music list today has a rock and a country theme or feel to it. So I think I'm going to start with the rock. And it's, uh, let's see. Well, when I give you the, give you the, the, the country version of this, the rock. I think you'll be totally surprised. First one is Adventures of Raiden Dance Maggie by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> Some what people are you talking like? about, I've never even heard that song. Listen to it. I'm over here handing you pearls and you're over complaining about it. Hook it up. Number two, Sexual Revolution by Pink Floyd. Look at you. Those pearls I just gave you, you're clutching them right now, aren't you? You're that like, what song. I've never heard of that either. I'm telling no. you, you gotta you gotta dig if you wanna be working on my sound list. Come on, man. Work it. Here's the catch. If you want the A-list for like the stuff they play on the radio all the time, you hear comfortably numb and What's you hear that one song. We don't need no education. Don't. And those are jams. They rock it out. But, you know, I'm not looking for like those songs. I dig for real, real, real songs. Okay, here's a kind of a mainstream song, though. I stayed on the level with this. Heaven by the Psychedelic Furs. Now, I listened to the entire Psychedelic Furs library all at the same time when I ski some days. Just That's all I'll listen to all day. Put it on shuffle and just jam. That's how much I like the furs. Sting pulls up number four with Be Still, My Beating Heart. If, uh, if you're a Sting fan... There's, like, I don't know how you go and pick those out, but the way I pick them out is the ones that are kind of cool to ski by. Sometimes you ski fast, sometimes you ski in the park, sometimes you want something to listen to on the way up. That's one of those songs you hope you catch when you're on the lift. And then the last one is this fun song that, like, when you're skiing in Arizona, there's always a lot of sun. So, Let My Love Open the Door by Pete Townsend comes in at number five. Look at everybody's like, okay, what's the next five? Because uh, the, the top ten list today has the top five rock and the top five kind of country. Like, I, you'll see what I'm saying here. It's not exactly country, but it's like... <sighs> Number one, Flirting with Disaster by Molly Hatchet. Throw that thing on and ski as fast as you can. To that song and you'll know what i'm talking about number two the devil went down to georgia by the charlie daniels band god rest his soul i think we just lost charlie daniels this last year in 2020 i'm sorry to say july 6 2020 we lost the legendary charlie daniels i'm sorry to say wow well anyway Put that on when you're skiing. Tell me that's not even fun when you're just sitting here thinking about listening to it, just saying, oh my God, I just love listening to that song. Yeah, I know. It is, I mean, uh, number three, because you want to ski down, jam to those two songs, you get off, uh, get on the, the lift, and now you're listening to Dire Straits on the way up. Get off. Number four is Back in the Saddle by Aerosmith. Tell me that's not the jam. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, like you're skiing mad to that song. Again, I know you guys just got your mind blown. You're like, what? I'm sorry that I got to do it to you, you know. <laughs> that's just how it goes. You got to blow your mind sometimes. And so here's what I'm going to tell you. Take advantage of it. I'm handing you pearls here. If you don't want them, let them drop. Someone will take them. We're on Spotify. We're on uh, Pocket Cast, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker. Listen to us on the podcast system, if you will. One of those. 
like us subscribe hit the bell we've got fresh stuff coming out all the time we're going to help you learn how to ski we want to teach you a few things we want to give you a hand helping you up a little bit <laughs> so as we finish up here uh I was looking at the ski report right now for Snowball, and uh, you know what's just insane is how much snow fell in Arizona. Like, it's so cool to see this too, because when you think of what we've got, they, I guess we've got somewhere between a foot or two in the last uh, 24 hours, maybe. Okay, let's see. It says uh, 10 inches. Wow, 10 inches. That sounds... <laughs> I don't know, man. That doesn't look like no 10 inches from yesterday. That looks like a load more than that. Woof! It says there's 45 trails open. 62-inch depth. Seven lifts open. Snowball's rocking right now. Snowball's rocking. You should see the, the lift lines. They're handling a whole bunch of people and they're moving them right up the hill. And there's just so much snow. It's beautiful. We have the Louis Vuitton Valentine's Day show coming. The Bowls of Veil. And boots. Ski boots. We're going to be talking ski boots. Leave your comments if you would, by the way. I, I should mention that to you because I know that some people want to know some things that I haven't covered yet and some things that are going to be coming up and uh, I want to get those uh, worries out of your mind. All right. Okay, one, two, three. Wow, I wonder if I was a little too close on that.